about the outsiders. A lot of people on the list are reviewed by the high church establishment. A lot of them live in both places. I really wish I could say thank you to that shy, often unhappy woman. I wish I could say how much her work meant to me and to many of us, and how she showed us that there were chinks in the wall between high church and genre. I wish she could see how this space is both safe and a space that honors her. And it honors all of you who have come here to make it that way. You know, I think she might. At the end of We Have Always Lived in the Castle, Mary Cat lives with her sister and her uncle in the ruins of the house where she grew up. The town they live in has done them a great amount of harm. But now, every night, someone comes and leaves a basket with dinner in it. The community, in its own inadequate way, is trying to mend a breach. You are all here at this convention. You are all proof that community can be more than adequate. Thank you all. You should be proud of your work, both as writers and as makers of community. nominees long enough. <laughs> so, the short fiction category. The nominees in the short fiction category for the 2012 Jackson Awards are Bejazzle by Margot Lanigan, How We Escaped Our Certain Fate by Dan Sean, Little America by Dan Sean, the Magician's Apprentice by Tasman Muir, A Natural History of Autumn by Jeffrey Ford, and Two Houses by Kelly Link. And the award goes to... Now, you know, at this moment, Connie would turn to the audience and she would start doing that stretch thing she does. <laughs> She'd be unable to get it out of the envelope. Hey, I'm not used to these heels. At least I'm like Jennifer Lawrence. I didn't fall on my way to the stage. <laughs> and the winner is A Natural History of Autumn by Jeffrey Ford. really wanted to be here, but he now, he no longer lives on this coast, he lives in Ohio, so it was harder for him to get here, and he's also teaching someplace out there, I think. Um, he says, it's always great to have a story appear in FNSF, and I'm thankful to Gordon Van Gelder for publishing this homage to some of the Japanese writers and filmmakers who have inspired me over the years. Also, a tip of the hat to, the Shirley, Jackson, to Shirley Jackson for her fiction, her inspiration, and her example. nominees for the single author collection category. Uh, uh, award dear to my heart. Crackpot Palace by Jeffrey Ford. Errantry by Elizabeth Hand. The Potawatomi Giant and Other Stories by Andy Duncan. Remember Why You Fear Me by Robert Shearman. The Woman Who Married a Cloud by Jonathan Carroll. And Wind Eye by Brian Evenson. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and in the continuing sweep, Crackpot Palace by Jeffrey Ford. Jeff, um, I told Jeff you have to give me something to say just in case you win. And I, as a judge, it's very hard for me. I'm, People think I can't keep secrets, but I can. <laughs> but that way. You know, and, and Jeff said, oh yeah, you know, here, I'll give you three things. I'm up for three things. I'm not going to win any of them. Forget it. And it's like, ha, 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 I know. <laughs> but anyway, this is what he wrote. 
And I was hoping he'd write something different for each one also. I was like, oh my God, because he's like, well, not, I can write anything, but I'm not gonna win anyway. Uh, <clears throat> Crackpot Palace, being the dark and twisted creature that it is, when, was not an easy sell. The fact that it roams the world today is due to the perspicacity of my agent, Howard Morheim, <clears throat> and the courage of my editor at HarperCollins, Jennifer Brell. I'm sorry. <clears throat> also, thanks to all of the editors who first published these stories and to my son, Derek, for giving me the perfect cover art. And last, a tip of the hat to Shirley Jackson for her fiction, her inspiration, and her example. Thank you. <laughs> The nominees for the anthology category for the 2012 Shirley Jackson Awards are 21st Century Dead, edited by Christopher Golden, Black Wings 2, edited by S.T. Joshi, Exotic Gothic 4, Postscripts, number 2829, edited by Daniel Olson, Night Shadows, edited by Greg Heron and J.M. Redman, and Shadow Show, all New Stories in Celebration of Ray Bad Bradbury, edited by Sam Weller and Mort Castle. And the award goes to... Exotic Gothic 4, Postscripts. <laughs> Donnell Olson unfortunately couldn't be here. He sends his apologies. Uh, he's going to be absolutely thrilled. He had, yeah, <laughs> he did not think he would get this. Uh, here's what he told me to tell you. Uh, he said to England's PS Publishing, thanks for caring about what your country gave us first, the Gothic. To the 25 contributing writers from 10 countries who came out of the night like goblin men to the maiden Laura, Thanks for making the most addictive prose. And to those cruel loves, monsters, and devils who kept scorching exotic Gothic forest pages with their flames, thank you for causing enough damnation to get the book noticed. He's going to be completely thrilled. This is really fun, by the way. You should all do this. The nominees in the novella category are 28 Teeth of Rage by Enos Drake, Delphine Dodd by S.P. Mikowski, I'm Not Sam by Jack Ketchum and Lucky McKee, The Indifference Engine by Project Ito, and Sky by Karen Warren. And the winner is Sky by Karen Warren. Karen asked me to accept on her behalf, um, probably because I wrote the prologue to, uh, or the introduction rather, to her amazing um, collection, which this comes from. And uh, she did not tell me to say anything, so I think all I will say is thank you very much. She is an amazing woman. She had a tremendous moment of power there. <laughs> could have done all sorts of things in her name. <laughs> the nominees in the novelette category are The Crying Child by Bruce McAllister, originally in The Bleeding Child, sorry. The House on Ashley Avenue by Ian Rogers. Reeling for the Empire by Karen Russell. Wild Acre by Nathan Ballingrud, and The Wish Head by Jeffrey Ford. <laughs> and the winner is Reeling for the Empire by Karen Russell. Ms. Russell, unfortunately, was not able to attend uh, the ceremony today, as she's currently teaching. Uh, she writes, I'm so freaking honored to be on that list of nominees. <laughs> Aw. She didn't write, Aw. 
That's my own interjection. Uh, I was, I, although it would have been cool if like, a Pulitzer Prize nominee wrote awe in your speech. Uh, anyway, and she asks, in the mind-blowing event that I won, someone there could accept the award for me. So the board is accepting the award on her behalf and sends her congratulations. And we're down to the last category. I just wish more of the nominees had been actually been able to be here so that we could do the Hugo really torment them 